Starting off today, we are going to be, as I mentioned, talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves, who just absolutely took it to the Denver Nuggets last night in their Game 6 matchup, and now we have a Game 7 on our hands, as this series has been very much unpredictable, very back and forth and this time it is the Nuggets falling in one of these blowout games, and it was really interesting to see the adjustments from the Timberwolves from game five to six. Now, I don't think that they did at their core anything extremely different, but there were some subtle differences from the past couple games, the biggest of which was the defense on Nikola Jokic, where we saw Jokic go absolutely berserk in Game 5, dropping 40 points, dishing out 13 assists, not turning the ball over once. And in this instance, it in large part had to do with the fact that in that game, the Timberwolves were maybe... Maybe they were confident, maybe they weren't, but either way, they decided to roll Rudy Gobert out there, in part because Carl Anthony Towns was once again dealing with foul trouble in that Game 5, but Cat was much more disciplined, and he was the primary defender in this game to cover Jokic, which I think is the better option for this Timberwolves defense as a whole. Rudy Gobert can be the help defender. He matches up against Aaron Gordon, who has had some good three-point shooting games in this series, especially in the three consecutive games that the Nuggets won. He also hit a couple in that Game 2 matchup as well that the Timberwolves ended up running away with, but sort of... Having him be able to roam the paint a little bit more and deter other players from getting involved, I think that that is the way that the Timberwolves have to operate. Obviously, it seems like on paper, Rudy Gobert would be the best possible defender to put against the uh, Nikola Jokic, the MVP versus the Defensive Player of the Year, but... In actuality, it sort of removes Gobert from being able to alter any other types of shots because he has to be so fixated on Jokic. And Jokic was also... Again, it's not that Gobert was out of position, I thought, in a lot of those instances, but Jokic was just hitting tough shot after tough shot, and ultimately it was just a blowout game the other way where Jokic was unstoppable. And one of the big differences, of course was the fact that the rest of the team didn't necessarily come to play the same way, at least from the three-point shooting perspective, where they were abysmal from the line the Nuggets were. 7 of 36 from the three-point line. That is very rarely going to cut it in a 2024 playoff matchup in the NBA. And as a result, the Nuggets scored just 70 points. So again, Credit to Carl Anthony Towns for being able to stick in there and Rudy Gobert for being able to disrupt these other shots at the rim for the Timberwolves defense to sort of fly around like they were early in this series. Jaden McDaniels, I thought, was incredible in this game as well from a defensive perspective, just flying around to alter plays. But I think that at the same time, you do have to sort of point to this Nuggets team that hasn't necessarily, you know, been tremendous, the supporting cast that is, over the course of this series. And Jamal Murray had another sort of stinker of a game where he was 4 of 18 from the field. He was 2 of 7 from 3 and just seems like he is really struggling right now. Now, how much of that has to do with the calf strain that he was dealing with in the first round against the Lakers? guess we won't really know until the Nuggets are eliminated and we probably get a little bit more information about it but Murray struggled once again in this matchup Michael Porter Jr. is becoming a real concern as well after I praised him because of the fact that he was putting up 22 23 points per game in the first series as a third option against the Lakers and he was tremendous but since then he has really dipped off in play and I have talked about it in both of the past two games the fact that Christian Brown Mike Malone is choosing to close these games out with him instead of Michael Porter Jr. because MPJ isn't necessarily giving much on the defensive side of the ball anyways and they just feel like 
Christian Brown can at least provide a little bit more defense to help guard Anthony Edwards. Now, Brown wasn't great in this game either. Nobody was really for the Nuggets in general. And then on the other side, a couple things. One is the return of Mike Conley, who I have been talking about. I think he is far more impactful to this young sort of collection of offensive talents and again offensive talents you know Jaden McDaniels and Rudy Gobert for as good of defensive players they are very limited on the offensive side of the ball and Mike Conley just helps guide everything for this Timberwolves team and you know he was dealing with an Achilles injury in game five and he looked pretty good at least from my eye test now he didn't have to be pushed maybe all too much but he looked really good in this game played 31 minutes and then of course the real thing was Anthony Edwards returning to form. He had struggled in that game five matchup, held to 33% from the field. I believe he scored just 15 points, but in this game, he really got cooking in the first quarter. When Anthony Edwards is hitting step back threes, you know, it just feels like his game is limitless because of the fact we know how good he is at getting downhill and, you know, Again, when the difficult shots start to fall for Anthony Edwards, it seems like he can do just about anything. There was a little bit of a scary moment in it was the third quarter, I believe. It could have been the fourth, but at this point, Timberwolves are up by 20, 25 points, and Anthony Edwards took a hard fall. He jumped up in the air and landed, it looked like, right on his tailbone, and he was really slow to get up. They cut away to commercial break, and... You know, he popped right back up and was able to keep going. So, you know, that's being a 22-year-old and having that type of energy. But it did look scary there for a minute. And I assume that he is probably going to be fine in the long term here. But, you know, I think that ultimately with this series, again, we've seen the energy shift every which way so far. And... I thought that it was definitely a positive sign for the Timberwolves, and you have to feel great about last night, but I do not expect this type of a performance from Denver when it comes to Game 7. You saw the clips, possibly, if you were in tune with the game. Jokic standing up on the bench the entire fourth quarter. The look on his face, he looked like, he looked like a villain sort of plotting his revenge, and I think that he is going to you know, be... The full version of himself in game seven but he's gonna need help from the rest of his team and I think that it is very possible that we're sort of at a point with this Nuggets team as we've talked about this in the past that seems like from a front office perspective they weren't a hundred percent focused on repeating as champions they want to become a dynasty and some of these young pieces that they have added while letting go the likes of a Jeff Green and a Bruce Brown, who they just didn't have the money to pay. But at this point, you know, they need their starters to be extremely effective, and that's not any sort of a hot take or anything. But Jamal Murray, they are very reliant on him. And I don't know what it is with him. Again, it could possibly be the injury, but we also saw just in game two the way that mentally he was taken out of that game by the hard defense that Minnesota was playing. And now they're going to be back home. They should, they're going to have the home court advantage, of course. And, you know, I think that some of these other role players should be able to step up a little bit more in those instances. That's where you see maybe a Christian Brown be able to take on a bigger role but again Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. have really struggled for the Nuggets so far in this series for the most part and it's been Aaron Gordon putting together good performances from them but you also saw the fact that the Timberwolves were sort of willing to focus more attention on Jokic where as much as their strategy in the previous game in game five was to say okay we're gonna play Jokic straight up and we are not gonna let him get the playmaking going where didn't seem like they were quite as scared of some of these role players in this latest matchup they were sort of doubling from the top and good rotations on the back end if you're gonna double down from the three-point line don't want to give up the easy corner threes so that was clearly a strategy again like I mentioned with the Carl Anthony Towns primary matchup they were 
actually, you know, staying put specifically in these matchups where Aaron Gordon and Nikola Jokic are trying to run some two-man action with one another. They're going under everything. If Jokic wants to shoot the three, it seems like they are okay with that, and they would rather have the defense set up in the post in order to take away because Jokic hasn't been great necessarily from three in this series either. So, you know, I think that they do definitely have some sort of a blueprint for the Nuggets and they have the personnel defensively to be able to match up. But again, all of that changes because if Jamal Murray is feeling himself, if Michael Porter Jr. gets going, it makes it a lot harder to fixate all your attention on Jokic. So I really think it's going to come down to the other, again, it's not even necessarily like bench players or anything like that. You expect Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. to be able to show up for you offensively, but it has not been that case up to this point. So let me know what your thoughts are. I'm still going to lean with the Nuggets. That was my pick coming into the series. And at this point, it seems like somebody may get blown out in Game 7. Hopefully, we do actually get a classic. This game's going to be taking place on Sunday. But let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section. But we are now going to be taking our first break of the show. And when we come back on the other side, we have some updates on the NHL playoffs. The New York Rangers officially are the first team moving on to the conference finals and they did so based off of a pretty crazy third period comeback and standout performance so you won't want to miss the conversation surrounding that so stick with us and we will be right back after this short break <laughs> 